All right, we got a lift gate here. Customer complaint is it will not unfold or fold. All right, so we're gonna bring it up. You can see pressing the toggle switch this way moves the lift gate up and holding up and forward on this toggle opens it up, up and that way on the toggle will close it. So we'll bring it up out of the uh, travel latch right here. All right, goes up all right. So now pressing this button up and this toggle switch this way to open it up. All right, doesn't open up. You can see it does go up. If I bring it down a little bit and press up and open, it just goes up. All right, and we'll try to close it here. Again, closing is up on this toggle, forward on that toggle. And again, just goes up, all right? So normally what I like to do, just to rule out any electrical issue on this end, so all the control switch wiring, which by the way, the control switch wiring is all controlled by this. Uh, it's a 15 or 20 amp breaker right here. You can see this gets tapped off of the bus bar here from the, from the battery box that powers the motor and feeds this 20 amp breaker and this goes out to the control switch wiring. So if you ever have an issue with control switch wiring not working at all, I would uh, go to this breaker first and then look for the issue uh, after you uh, replace that. So uh, I like to get a brand new switch right here because I'm able to bypass any wiring out this way. So it's a nice thing about these models. I can just unplug it right here. And again, I'm bypassing an extension cable and I'm essentially, you know, putting a brand new switch on here. So it makes it uh, easier to troubleshoot. Get it in there. All right. So we're gonna, whoop, hit the camera. All right, back to business. Here we go. We're gonna try to open it again from here. See, it did not open. And so, we can be confident that it's not anything with this extension cord here or the switch out there, because we're having the same issue with a brand new switch. And uh, before moving forward, we want to make sure that we check the battery voltage. A low or dead battery will cause all kinds of weird problems with the lift gate or other electronics for that matter. So we're gonna do a quick check on the battery. Should be doing a low test on here. Uh, but we got a meter here, so we're just going to do a quick test. All right, so you can see we got 12.79 volts here, so that's a that's a good charge battery. So we should be all right. Oop, we got a meter lead switch, but it doesn't matter. We just see a negative. All right, 12.8 volts. All right, so we we got a decent battery. All right, so now we're going to come over here and check to see that this solenoid valve, this SV1, that's solenoid valve one, this is the one that diverts the oil from moving the lift gate up and down and diverts it to open and close, so. Okay, I just wanted to pop over to the uh, maintenance manual here quick so I could show you how I came to the conclusion that the S1 valve here uh, was the valve that we'd have to test out. All right, so, and by the way, these maintenance manuals, every major manufacturer, whether it's Man, uh, Maxon or Waltco, they uh, all put their maintenance and parts manuals online. Um, so it's a good idea to, uh, if you're servicing a lot of these uh, lift gates, is to download the manuals. All right, so this is uh, their uh, hy hydraulic uh, flow schematic that they provide, which is really nice to have. All right, you can see the oil starts down here in the, uh, in the reservoir, goes through a filter, goes through a pump that's driven by a motor, goes through a check valve. There's a relief valve right here. So if the uh, pressure builds up uh, too high, if there's a blockage or if a cylinder is deadheaded and it can't go up anymore, uh, once that pressure goes over 2,800 uh, PSI, it uh, bypasses back to tank. Uh, so it doesn't blow a line or blow the seals out of a hydraulic cylinder. But anyway, so that S1 valve, the one I was pointing out there, that's this one right here. You can see it says energized. So in order to open up, so power open to open up the lift gate, uh, S1 and S2 valve slash coil have to be uh, energized for it to be open. All right, so that's this one right here. And you can see what this one does when it's energized. It diverts the hydraulic oil. This uh, red is the, the pressure and this blue is the return back to the tank. Uh, you see the pressure goes to another solenoid, and this one is S2. 
um, and that one also has to be energized for it to open uh, instead of close. For close, if I scroll up here a little bit, this is the uh, close function right here, and it's just the S1. So the fact that we were only getting it to go up and down when we were trying to open and close, you could see if this thing is stuck or if it's not going the right way, the oil would go this pathway to these, which control the down and the up. So that's why I uh, made the decision to test this one first. Um, so this is the one here. So we're going to put our meter on here and hit the switch at the same time and see if we get voltage going to the solenoid. Now this, you can see this only has one wire right here. There's not two wires going to the solenoid. So this is a grounded solenoid. So this gets grounded through the base of the solenoid. So uh, we just have to put our positive meter lead on where the wire is and the negative uh, grounded to the manifold block or somewhere on the uh, chassis. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit open and close here and we're gonna put our meter lead here and see if we get any voltage. So let's see what we got. Hit open. You see we got 10 volts right there 10.6 volts but it's obviously not enough to get the uh, lift gate moving up and down all right we're gonna hit close oh he got smoke okay so i'd say our oil is bad right here all right, we're back here with a new solenoid. I'm gonna install it before I do. I'm gonna take this one off and I'm going to uh, ohm out the new solenoid and the old solenoid so you can see the difference between what uh, a new one is, brand new, and one that's failing, obviously, from the, uh, all the smoke coming through there. All right, so we'll pop this off. Take the wire off. Probably a good practice to turn the main power switch off before we work on it. All right, and this little retaining nut right here. All right, take that off. And then these coils slide right off. So again, this is the coil. This is what makes the magnetic field that pulls the little piston in here back and forth to divert the oil. Um, so we're gonna check this thing out. We're gonna ohm it out. Right. Meter on ohms. All right, again, these things are grounded through the, through the base here. So we're just gonna put our one meter lead on the base, make sure it's in there good. And I put our other meter lead on the post. There you can see we got, make sure we got a good 2.93 ohms. So not much resistance through this thing. This is the old one. So here's a brand new one. See what that ohms out at. 4.2 all right so we're only like an ohm off but that little bit is enough to make it make it fail all right so we're going to install this new solenoid coil I should say put the retaining nut back on wire back on Give it a shot. Turn the power back on. Hey, there we go. Now it works. Want to hit that ladder there, but now we're folding and unfolding.